Morning everybody, it's Jen here. Thanks uh, so much for joining us again this morning for another live Q&A all about sharks. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video uh, that we posted yesterday and hopefully you all enjoyed Monday's talk as well with Hayley, which was absolutely, well, fascinating. Uh, we have another Meet the Expert Monday coming up on Monday at 10 a.m. and that is going to be with Colin Speedy. He's going to be talking about basking sharks. And also tonight, uh, our very own Jax is teaming up with Sequest Southwest and she is going to be delivering a talk about sharks in the media, which is what she did her um, sort of final project on. Cool. So, yes, thank you. So we're going to get started. We've had a few questions in already. I'm just going to go through a few more facts about cat sharks as well some that we missed off the video yesterday. Um, so, small spotted cat sharks, first of all, their skin is actually covered in dermal denticles, which means tiny skin teeth. Uh, so actually, if you ever find one, just be careful if you're handling it. I mean, you shouldn't really handle it anyway, but if you are touching it, like that skin can be really rough and quite abrasive on your skin. Uh, they're often seen resting on the seabed um, or swimming. Uh, you can actually see them in groups because so, sometimes they can be quite sociable uh, and I think you can find females uh, more generally together than males because the females enjoy uh, kind of use each other as a way to um, uh, not be harassed by the males we'll say uh, so yeah safety in numbers and all that so when threatened, the small spotted cat shark will actually curl up into a donut like shape and they think they do that to make themselves look bigger, um, to obviously look harder to eat as well so they're not um, they're not as likely to be preyed on. Uh, they're absolutely stunningly beautiful. They live close to the seabed but only in shallow waters, so down to depths of about 100 metres. They are abundant around the UK as I said in the video yesterday but of course that doesn't mean that they don't need protection, as do many marine species. Um, all marine species, really. <laughs> um, when they're born, they're just about 9 to 10 centimetres, so they're only small. Uh, but they are fully fledged adults when they, well, sorry, fully fledged, fully grown. No, hang on, saying it wrong. They are completely self sufficient when they are born. Um, and they're, they're not looked after, they just have to go at, go at it alone and, and try and survive. Um, the incubation period for the eggs is about six to nine months and then the males actually have wider mouths and longer teeth than the females which is quite interesting to find out so moving on to nurse hounds they are actually one of the biggest species of cat sharks in the world uh, despite its name again it doesn't look after its young <laughs> um they are born at about 16 centimeters so again you, you know a fair bit bigger than the small spotted cat shark. Uh, their sort of incubation period is anywhere between 9 and 11 months. I think that depends as well on water temperature, how long the incubation period is. They are targeted in the Mediterranean Sea, where their flesh is sometimes used for food, for, for human consumption, um, and they're considered near threatened. So the two of the main threats that they have is actually overfishing and habitat loss, uh, which is really sad. To hear. So they're found close to the seabed as well, um, between depths of around 20 to 63 metres. So yeah, just some facts there about those amazing cat sharks. If you have any more questions about them, do give us a shout. Uh, and yeah, if like I said before, if you do see any, or you have seen any in the past, if you have any pictures or drawings or anything that you've done, any footage, please send them in because we'd love to have a look. So yeah, cool. So, question. So, Zachary has asked, how many sets of teeth uh, do sharks have? So, sharks have kind of rolled, rows and rows of teeth. It's almost like a conveyor belt. Uh, we're really lucky at Cornwall Wildlife Trust. We were actually given some shark jaws that we take to some events with us. I think, well, I loaned, long-term loaned these shark jaws. And it's actually really fascinating to have a look because you can see um, if you look at the back of the jaws, the actual teeth that are waiting to come through. So they'll just keep growing and keep coming through. So they're said to go through around 30,000 teeth on average in a lifetime. So obviously that is an awful lot of teeth. My glass keeps sticking to my coaster. So if you hear a bang, it's the coaster falling off my glass. Just have some water. 
Oh. So, I don't think I answered this one. This was actually asked last week about the egg cases, and it's actually really important. So, just in case I didn't, even if I did, it's good to reiterate. If you do come across any mermaid's purses, so any of the egg cases with embryos still inside, the best thing you can do is put them back in the water and try and weigh them down. Obviously not put something directly on the egg case, but sort of where the sort of anchor points is in the corner. Try and weigh them down. Hopefully then they might uh, still be able to grow and survive. So obviously that's, that's what we want to see. We want to see more of these species in our waters and then hopefully when we're snorkeling or diving we can we can get to see them which is always exciting um so yeah i hope that answered your question zachary uh sammy asked which shark can dive the deepest now jack's researched this one this morning and she really enjoyed doing it i must say so thank you for asking this question so the mega mouth is thought to live the deepest so about four thousand six hundred meters but they do come close to the surface or up to the surface as night. They are, at night they are filter feeders like basking sharks and whale sharks. Um, you don't really see sharks in the deep, deep water, even though four thousand six hundred meters is deep, um, because they're outcompeted in deeper water by different fish. Uh, so you tend to see them higher up, but. Just for sort of extra extra knowledge, other deep sea sharks that either live in the deep or visit the deep, which they're pretty alien, but they've got some pretty funky names. So, the Greenland shark goes down to about one thousand two hundred meters. Goblin shark, I think most of us have heard of that one, and if you haven't, you should definitely look up the goblin shark and see a picture because they are absolutely mesmerizingly creepy but fascinating to look at. So I'd highly recommend looking at them if you haven't already. Uh, the Ninja Lantern Shark, which that's the first I've ever heard of it, but what an amazing name. <laughs> um, they go down to about 1,443 metres, which is a very precise amount. I like that. Frill Shark down to about 1,570. A blunt nose six gill shark down to about 1,875 metres. And the cookie cutter shark down to about 3,700 meters, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you so much for those questions. So yeah, do keep them coming in and we will answer them as best we can. Um, I don't know if I said before, lovely Jackson Jody, uh, my little beach ranger elves today and busy researching a way to find out the answers to some of those trickier questions. So, Let's have a look if we've got some coming in. So what is the most dangerous shark in the UK? I mean, we don't really have any dangerous, well, starting again. So sharks in general, and we can't stress this enough. Um, obviously you do hear about instances where there's been people that have been bitten. That is, it's a mistake. Sharks never ever intend to hurt or harm any humans. They have no interest in eating us, like we are not tasty to them. Um, I said it last week, and, but this is the way I always think about them as like a puppy. And puppies, they feel with their mouths. Um, and that's kind of what sharks do. If they encounter a person in the water, they don't know what we are. They'll come over, not all the time. Most of the time they try and avoid us. They're shy, they, you know, they they don't they don't want to get mixed up with things they don't understand. Um, but yeah, they might come over and they might try and feel us out and see what we are. And that obviously can lead to an injury. But they don't, that is, it's not intentional and they don't mean to cause us any harm. So actually, for us as well, we don't really have any particularly what people would consider to be dangerous sharks that I'm aware of in the UK. We're really lucky in the fact that we have um, obviously basking sharks, which are the second biggest shark in the world, grow up to 12 meters. I mean, they are not at all dangerous because they, you know, are filter feeders. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't really consider any. Obviously, we have visits from sort of mako sharks. We have um, blue sharks regularly, but they are very much just like puppy dogs. And yeah, I wouldn't suggest putting your hand in its mouth, but they're, they're not going to. They're not going to injure us. 
Um, that being said, again, and I think, again, I said it last week, I wouldn't recommend if you did happen to encounter any marine species in in the ocean, you know, you shouldn't try and touch them. Like, even if it was a seal, you shouldn't reach out and try and touch it because seals can give you a nasty bite. Uh, again, like a dog, you know, if you make them jump. And you need to not put your hands out, keep yourself to yourself and just look and enjoy it. It's an amazing, amazing experience when you do come across different species in the ocean and you should just enjoy it and allow that creature to come to you or not and if it doesn't come to you just be happy that you caught a glimpse of it um, I'm just getting some information in so the only fatalities in the UK recorded are provoked attacks so fishermen who have um, been trying to catch them um, so yeah so again it's kind of provoked attacks Again, I kind of revert back to a dog metaphor because it's one of the easiest ones to do. If you provoke a dog, if you're going to poke it with a stick, it might end up giving you a bite. So it's, that's just sort of things you need to be aware of. So two fishermen apparently died uh, when they tried to blow up a basking shark and were killed by the explosion. Uh, fair. I mean, I don't really know why you'd be trying to blow up a basking shark. I shouldn't laugh. That's not funny. I'm sorry. So carrying on with another question that we've got. Um, fab, yeah, so Dylan asks, how many species of shark are there? So in the UK, we'll start with, we're really lucky. We have around 40 types of sharks and about 18 types of rays and skates, which is incredible. Worldwide, so there's about 440 different species of sharks. Um, but obviously, there's so much of the ocean that we're still yet to explore. So there might be other species that we do find. Um, they might not, but yeah, so about 100, uh, sorry, 440 species discovered so far. Uh, which species live the longest? So, um, it really depends on the species. Um, so a Greenland shark was found that was thought to be about 400 years old, which again is absolutely amazing. Uh, generally speaking, um, the larger species might live to about 20, 30 years old or the smaller species about 12 or 13 years so very much dependent on the species um so i'm just waiting for some more questions to come in but thanks and i can see that other people are joining us today so hello if you've just joined us today it's nice to nice to see you um again keep those pictures coming in as well if you've drawn any or taken any pictures of any skates rays sharks anything we love it we want to see them because they're incredible um, and if anyone's got any more questions, yeah, just let us know and that'll be great. So we're just waiting for how many types of sharks. I've answered that one. Thank you, Harry. I think Dylan answered that, asked me that one as well, which is really cool. So yeah, we'll go through some of the, um, some of the questions from last week, just in case you missed it. So someone asked us last week, which is good because it really relates back to the cat sharks as well. Do all sharks lay eggs? Obviously, we refer to them as mermaids' purses. Has everyone seen a mermaid's purse? If not, you know, when we are able to go for an explore on the beach again, I suggest you keep your eye out. Have a look in amongst the strand line, amongst the seaweed. It can be tricky because they are very similar in colour to seaweed, but once you start looking, uh, you'll be surprised how many you can actually find. Uh, so, yeah, have a look. Um, so, do all sharks lay eggs? No. Some do lay eggs. Some lay eggs internally um, and they'd give birth to the the embryo internally and then it would come out as almost like a live, as a as live young. But then you do have some that do give birth to live young as well, which I understand is the difference between a cat shark and a dogfish is the fact that dogfish give birth to live young. I'm just going to have a swig of water. Oh, I just found out after the, so... Apparently there was two new species of sharks were discovered in March 2020. So literally last month, deep in the Indian Ocean. So six gill sh saw sharks, which have been distinct, they have the, the distinctive snout filled with teeth and catfish, like whiskers or feelers that help them detect prey, which is amazing, isn't it? So yeah, we're still discovering different species of sharks. Um, someone's just asked the question, why is a basking shark called a basking shark? 
And I actually think what we'll do with that one is, if you want to find out lots more about basking sharks, you should uh, tune in on Monday for Meet the Expert Monday, and you should ask that to Colin Speedy because he is a basking shark expert, and he will be leading a talk on Monday at 10 a.m. about basking sharks. So tune in and find out of Colin why basking sharks are called basking sharks because I'd be quite intrigued to know that as well because I literally don't know whether the name has just come from somewhere, which is normally what happens. Um, so what's your favourite shark? So, and this is actually, I've just read, is off um, Jax's sister, which is really lovely. Hi Tara, hi Jax's sister. Um, and I've got to squeeze you Jax, so I'll squeeze you in a bit. Um, so <laughs> my favourite shark, now again, I, I was asked this last week and I find it really tricky. Um, and I think last week I, I said a Mako and that was, I put that down to the fact that they are really fast and they've got cool shaped torpedo shaped body. Um, they're often mistaken for uh, great whites, which is strange, which is, actually happened uh, to me and my friend when we were in South Africa. We'd gone on a boat trip um, and the guide was convinced it was a great white, but or a juvenile great white, but it definitely, it definitely was a Mako. So I picked Mako because of those reasons and for the fact that I've seen one and I haven't seen many species of shark, unfortunately. I'm hoping to see some more in the future and uh, potentially would love to go and see the, the blue sharks that we get a lot uh, around Cornwall. And I know that um, we're going to be having a talk about blue sharks. I can't remember if it's next Monday or the, the Monday after, but it'll be posted on Facebook. So that is going to be fascinating. So yeah, just waiting for some more questions to come in. Or if that is, if, if anyone has, if no one has any more questions, um, but I'd love to hear what your favourite sharks are actually and why. So um, get them posted and keep those comments coming. Um, yeah, so we'll just hold on a couple of minutes and if there's no more questions, we'll end it. But yeah, don't forget, we're going to have more of these videos coming up. So next Wednesday, um, I'll be putting out a video talking about different rays. Oh, I've just been told. So Monday the 27th is a blue, sa blue sharks talk. Sorry that I didn't remember the date. But yeah, Monday the 27th. So that's going to be, I can't wait to tune in for that myself. Um, so yeah, next Wednesday, we're going to be talking about rays. So the local rays that we find around Cornwall. Um, again, I'd love to give a massive shout out to the Sharks Trust because they are an amazing charity that do so much for sharks around the UK and globally. Um, and I know that they have some talks coming up. Uh, I think I feel like they've actually got one coming up today as well. So have a look out if you want to learn more about sharks. Have a look on their website. They've got really cool ID guides as well. Um, so have a peek and, you know, you'll probably be able to learn lots and lots, lots more about sharks. Um, if I wanted so, I've been told why basking in charts if I do want to know the answer. So I suppose we could, I'll do the answer. So it starts to be derived from the fact that they hang out the surface and bask. So fair enough. Uh, is it possible for a shark to drown from Dylan? Who said thank, oh, thank you, Dylan. Thank you for saying thank you um, uh, for answering the question. Um, so from my understanding, um, sharks obviously they have their gills and that's why you get some sharks that when they even when they do rest if they're still they have to keep water pumping over those gills um and it's the same you know if there's other species of sharks that have to keep moving um for the same reason to keep water pumping um so i'm wondering if i suppose yes they can it would be considered drowning so they have to be that's why if you've ever seen and i go back to this film because um it's just so ridiculous if you've ever seen the film deep blue sea awful film <laughs> and you know the shark the sharks are genetically modified or something and then and they do things like swim backwards and it's just all ridiculous um so yeah they can they can actually drown that's why they have to keep water pumping over those gills uh, the throw of the fl flow of water through the gills is essential for sharks to breathe. Otherwise, they would die of lack, lack of oxygen. So that is drowning. We've got some more. Oh, we've got Carol from Good Morning, everyone from One Bag Beach Clean. Hi, Carol. Hope you're okay. 
lovely one bag beach clean. I wonder if you're managing to do any beach cleans as your daily exercise. <laughs> um, so I've got someone coming in saying, so Shelly says, I like the shark with the really long flat noses that a goblin shark. So the goblin shark is the one that has the sort of pointy nose that sticks out uh, a bit further, if that makes sense. So if that's the one you're thinking of, uh, then yes, that is the one. Cool. Well, what I'm going to do then, guys, is I'm going to leave it there. But if you do have any more questions, um, do keep some, you know, keep making comments and we will answer them after. I'll go through the comments and make sure we answer the questions. Hope um, I've managed to answer them all. OK, sorry if I sound a little bit bunged up today as well. My hay fever is really bad because uh, everyone's cutting their grass at once because obviously everybody is uh, everyone's at home. So they're gardening in the beautiful sunshine. And long may it continue. I'll deal with my hay fever if, uh, if the sunshine continues. That's the, that's the deal. So amazing. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Tune in. We've got so much coming up. So do tune in. And yeah, let's uh, keep on being positive and keep bringing nature into our homes and learning about what amazing species there are in the world. Cool. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.